our connection. So, I am Dory popping in on Keto for Real Life People. Colorful Keto with Dory. Nancy normally does a feature for you guys, clean eating. So, we're going to do that together tonight while Nancy's busy. So, today we're going to talk about our veggies, our fats, and we're going to make an awesome side dish together today. So, I brought out my favorite fat collection, and I thought we would start by talking about that. When we're talking clean eating, one of the most important things for us to do is to add our good, healthy fats to our veggies. Miss Kathy, hello darling, it's so nice to see you. So, Nancy asked me if I would do the clean eating series for tonight, and I said sure I would, because it's lots of fun. Clean eating can be fun. So let's start with, let's look at some of my favorite fats. So olive oil is one of my favorites for dollar value. It's one of the most economically priced oils to be able to keep in your cupboard. So if you're just starting keto, I would recommend starting with an olive oil because it's a really good fat and it's one of your lower price points. I really love the flavor of avocado oil. It's a lot more pricey than your olive oil, but the flavor is really nice, especially um, for things like salads. When you're garnishing with an oil, the flavor of an avocado oil is, oh, it's amazing, amazing. Hello, Chris and Lisa, Linda. It's so nice to see you guys. And, and I know you've been missing Nancy and you have questions. So if you guys have any questions that you want to pop in, we're going to do this just like Nancy normally does the clean eating. You guys can ask any questions. If you have anything you want to talk about in particular, feel free to pop it in and that's what we're going to do. Then my next favorite is coconut oil. When I started keto, coconut oil was my first choice. I looked at budget and I looked at the different things that we can use it for and I decided my first investment was going to be coconut oil because you can melt it down, you can add it to fat bombs and I just found it was the most versatile. So coconut oil is a big one in my books I love. MCT oil is the refined version of coconut oil. So it's medium chain triglycerides. Now, where I live in Canada, they don't actually market it as MCT oil, it's just called coconut oil. But when you read the ingredients on the back, all it says it contains is MCT oil. So here it's packaged a little bit differently. This I find comes in at about $8 on the price point, so it's mid-range. I, I enjoy it again for salads, especially for things that you're garnishing. A lot of people like the MCT in their high fat coffee. Now, one of the last fats that I discovered was ghee. And I, I was so ghee resistant that I even called it G. I called it G for a while because I'm from Canada and Guy is a French guy's name. <laughs> but when I actually broke down and bought myself some Guy, I understood why everybody was bragging up on it. So Guy is the condensed form without the dairy of butter. So what they do is they take your regular butter that looks like this and they cook it down until they cook all of the dairy out of it and you get a refined version of butter with all of the dairy cooked out. So you get all of the flavor of butter without any of the dairy. So ghee top of my list. Now this is what I have on hand right now for fat. In addition to this, I, I do buy pure lard. Um, when I render it, I use my bacon fat, I use my sausage fat, any of my rendered fats, I save them and I use as well. But as my basic fat portfolio, this is what I keep at home on the regular basis. And this gives me enough of a variety in flavors and in types of fat. 
because not only does every fat taste differently, every fat cooks a little differently. So for example, if you're doing something high heat, you don't want coconut oil or avocado oil. You want to use either ghee or lard or olive oil. So not only do they taste differently, not only do they all cook differently, but each kind of fat breaks down at a different level. So when you are layering your fats, you're getting the best benefit of all of the qualities of your fats. So say for example, that a coconut oil breaks down slower than an avocado oil. If you're mixing both, then you're able to layer the benefits of your good fats. So I'm going to take a quick scroll, hello Miss Linda, and see if you guys have any questions to start and then we're going to start preparing our side dish for tonight's clean eating. Hello Miss Amy, it's so nice to see you. Let me know where you guys are watching from and if you have any questions, Rosa, it's so nice to see you Rosa and Linda, it's so awesome to see you Miss Linda. Um, she said, Linda says she has bought the ghee, but she hasn't tried it yet. I, I dropped the gauntlet, girl. You gotta try. You gotta try it tonight. You have to. It is so good. I don't know what you're gonna eat it on yet. Let's use it for your veggie side. What kind of veggie are you having tonight? Let me know what you're having, and I'll let you know how to use that ghee in it tonight. Um, Marianne says she's not really a fan of the ghee. I find it tastes like a really strong butter. So for me, it tastes like movie theater butter. But if you don't love the taste of butter, you might not love the ghee. I, I do though, I won't lie. Like I love it, I love it. Amy is tuning in from Pennsylvania. And Charlotte is tuning in from India. That is so awesome. And I'm in Canada, just, just in case you guys are curious about, about the accent. <laughs> Hello, Carol from Iowa. It's so nice. The land of potatoes. No, that's Idaho, right? That's Idaho is the land of potatoes. I don't know. Dory doesn't know her geography by food. <laughs> geography by food. That's funny, Dory. You're funny, Dory. Okay, so when we're talking side dishes, let me move some of this fats out of the way. What we're going to do today is we're going to do an au gratin. So I used to make a lot of uh, potato au gratin. Let me grab my bigger knife. Hang on one second. Okay, there we go. We got the big bite. So I used to make a lot of potatoes au gratin. And what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you one of my new favorites. Now, I ran out and I found this at my, well, not local, because I had to drive to the city, but local-ish farmer's market. Now, this is a diacon radish. So it is a variation of radish, and it's very, very large. It's low in carbs. So we're going to slice this up, and we're going to use this to do our au gratin. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut it in half so that it's like slices. I did pre-wash it, but I'm going to leave the skin on it. When I do my potatoes au gratin, I really liked them with the classic skin on. So we're going to do something very similar to that with the daikon radish. Now, radish has a very sharp flavor when it's raw. And I'm sure you guys have noticed that. Either you love or you hate the taste of radish. There really isn't a middle ground. Like if you love it, you love it all day long. If you hate it, you hate it all day long. But I'm gonna tell you a secret. When you cook radish, that flavor goes away. And there really isn't much of a flavor left behind in the base of radish. So that is why it's one of my favorites for a potato substitute. So you can chop it up, you can do an au gratin, you can mash it up and do like a whipped faux potato, um, I love radish raw as well, so I'll use it a lot raw, but it's my favorite. You can chop it up and do like you would do an oven roasted potato. 
I like the standard radishes for that because they look like a baby red potato. So then I fix them the same way I used to do baby red potatoes. I put butter and olive oil, some salt, some pepper, a little bit of oregano, and I put them in the oven to bake up. So easy peasy, we're just slicing up this radish. Now, this is the first time I've tried the daikon radish. I'm I'm a huge fan. I really I really like it. I find the flavor is very subtle. It's not a really strong it's not quite as sharp as the red radish flavor. It's very yummy. Hello Miss Diana. It's so nice to see you. Linda says home fries with radishes are very good. Yes. I have tried fries, I've tried radish chips, I've tried a few things and I really I quite like them a lot. So let's get this other half sliced up and we'll get them going in our au gratin. Now, in a standard au gratin, back in the day, what did you put in your au gratin? I put, I would thicken it with flour and it was a base of butter and milk or cream. And then I would thicken it with flour to get it thickened. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna use cream cheese we're going to use mozzarella cheese, and then we're going to use a little bit of cream. Now, normally for this, I would use a heavy cream. Unfortunately, when I went to the store the other day, they did not have any 33% heavy cream. The highest fat cream I was able to get the other day is 18%. Now, I don't ever recommend going below the 18% um, fat content-wise. But in a pinch, I will use the 18% because it's all that was available to me. So it was 18% cream or nothing when I went to the store the other day. So I try not to very often. There's more carbs in the 18% than there is in your 33 or 35% cream. But in a pinch, an 18% will do and it's better than nothing, unfortunately. So we're going to take our slices of radish and we're going to layer them. So I'm going to do a layer of radish and then I'm going to put some ghee on it. So we've got our first layer of radish and I'm going to add a blob of ghee. About a half a tablespoon per layer, I'm going to say. So we got our nice blob of ghee. And then we're going to layer another layer of radish on top. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to par steam them in the microwave so that they're slightly tender. So we're just going to layer the radish, layer the ghee, and we're going to pop that in the microwave to do a partial steam so that we don't end up with a really firm potato-like substance. So let's layer those on top there nicely. And then we're going to put another blob of ghee on top, and I'm going to pop these ones into the microwave just for a few minutes to do the very first pre-steam on them. Okay, let's get a little bit more ghee. You could put your salt and pepper and your seasonings with it on at this time as well. I'm going to add them after. So let's get us a plastic wrap. And I'm going to pop this in the microwave for three minutes. So it'll be just enough to par cook the radish. But now that I've got the plastic on it, I can show you guys what it looks like. And we'll pop that in for three minutes. And this is a great time that I can take a scroll and see what you guys are up to. Okay, Angie, it's so nice to see you, Angie. Hello, hello, darling. Uh, Diana, hello. Where are you watching from, Diana? I'm curious where you're watching from. Um, Diana says, I know I've been so busy, I've missed you. That's okay. That's okay. I won't lie. I'm, I'm popping in all the time. So when you guys can join me, you can join me. No pressure. I'm always here. And you know what? It's always available on the replay when you got time. No pressure. <laughs> Rose says, what kind of radish is it? It's daikon. So D-I-K-O-N. Daikon radish. And they're very, very large. They're very low in carbs. Um, I'd have to look them up. I think, if I remember correctly, I think it said like four grams of carbs per 
hundred grams. Like it was small. It was it was such a small amount. Any radish is really really low in carb. And I will say radish is kind of the exception to the rule, because as a general rule with veggies, below ground bad, above ground good. But radish is one of the exceptions to the rule. It is a root vegetable, but due to the amount of fiber to density to water content, I think is kind of why it levels out to be better. It's just, it's just yummy too. <laughs> like, it's also yummy. So while we've got those microwaving up, we'll get out our cream cheese and we'll tidy up over here and get everything else set up to go and eat this piece of radish because it's yummy. Mm. And if you love horseradish, man, I love horseradish. You can get the really strong, sharp radish and grind it down and make your own homemade horseradish. Mm. I think that might have to be a project for us because I love horseradish. Especially since starting keto, I really, really love horseradish. So let me see how much of this cream cheese I've got left. I've got... I'm going to say what's probably about six tablespoons left. So I'm going to cut that in half so that I can use half for another project. And we're going to use about three tablespoons of cream cheese for this one. Okay, so let's get that wrapped back up. Cream cheese is one of my favorites. And then I think we'll use the last little bit to do the cream cheese fat bomb bites, the savory fat bombs. So how I do that is I take my cream cheese... I add bacon, I add onion, I add a little bit of dried herbs, mix it all together, then you roll it into balls, and then I roll those in pecan or walnut or bacon, crumbled up bacon, and they're just little teaspoon size little bites. When I make them, I usually make about 10, so it's a nice little appetizer size. Okay, so we've got our steamed radish and I'm gonna whew, oh that smells so nice and as soon as it starts to cook it loses that sharp radishy smell and it really starts to just smell like the butter and the other stuff that you have on the go so I'm just gonna kind of give it a little stir and we can see they're par cooked but not cooked all the way through because I want this to bake off in the oven so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna pre par cook them and get them ready to go into the oven so I'm gonna take this cream cheese and I'm just gonna cube it up in rough cubes so that we can add it in chunks and they don't have to be tiny but you don't want you want it to spread out all over the place as it melts so you want to kind of get a few chunks in there and then we'll add our cream. And again, normally I would do this with a heavy cream, had I heavy cream. So substitute this in the recipe with heavy cream. I, I wouldn't recommend using the 18%. I'm just in a pinch and that's what I have today. So we're gonna use a little bit of my cream. And again, I would swap this out for a heavy cream and we're gonna put about two to three tablespoons of our cream and then now is when I'm gonna add the salt and pepper and other seasonings so we're gonna salt it I salt it <laughs> we'll salt it we'll pepper it there we go so that's what it looks like right there I'm gonna tip it so you guys can see then I'm going to top that with mozzarella and Parmesan cheese. So I'm going to do a mix of a little bit of parm and a little bit of mozza. And again, when you're doing your clean eating stuff, you want to limit the amount of cheese that you're... <coughs> Pardon? <coughs> Ooh. <coughs> that was attractive. Woo! You want to limit the amount of cheese that you're eating so when you use the sharper flavors of cheese 
you're getting a bigger bang for your buck. So I'm adding about a tablespoon and a half of Parmesan cheese. And then we're gonna add about a third of a cup of mozzarella. Now what I do like to do is I like to put some of the cheese when it bakes and then just as it's about done, I like to top it with another layer of cheese and broil it just to brown the cheese. But let me put a cover on that, that way I can tip it and we don't make a mess here. And this one is already par cooked. So this you only need to pop in the oven for about 20 minutes at about 300 degrees depending on the heat of your oven but we've got everything all in there so we've got our ghee our cream cheese our mozzarella cheese everything all in there and I'm just gonna pop that in the oven to bake and that's my side dish for today so let me quick get this stuff out of the road and then we'll take questions for a few minutes When I pop this in the oven for my dinner side dish, I will post pictures of it for you guys and I'll make sure that I share them to Keto for Real Life people as well so you can see what it turned out like when it was all baked in. Now, if you find that your au gras is a little bit too runny, you can add just a sprinkle of xanthan gum in your last few minutes of baking and it will help thicken up the sauce. I do find personally, especially when you're using a heavy cream, it usually thickens up on itself. I, I will not put the plastic wrap in the oven. No, plastic wrap does not go in the oven, only in the microwave. I, I only wanted to put this on so I could turn it and not, not make a mess. Before this goes in the oven, I will remove the plastic wrap. If you want to have it covered, cover it with tin foil. You can cover it with aluminum foil if you want it to be covered. And look at that, I just dangled my... Oh, I'm so smooth, Dory. Did you see that? Did you see what I did? I just dangled my ties inside of my coffee cup. <laughs> ah, so smooth. And and also, it's it's a My Pony, My Little Pony cup. Just, I, I don't know if you guys noticed that or not. It's My Little Pony. Just saying. Mmm. <laughs> Okay, so let's see what else we got for questions. Hello, Miss Kelly. Kelly did an awesome, awesome live the other day, too. You're going to have to post that on my group, Kelly, please and thank you. Because I, I love your cooking lives. It was awesome. Linda says, well, now I know what I can use my ghee for. And, girl, you can sub it for anywhere you put butter. Um, I love ghee in my fatty coffee. So I will put you know, a half of a tablespoon of ghee and a half of a tablespoon of coconut oil or butter. I, I swap out all of my fats for in my coffees too because then I don't get bored, right? Like nobody wants to be bored. Nobody wants to hate their food. Nobody wants to, we already played that game, right? We went without all the stuff. We hated the food. We ate chicken breasts and plain broccoli you know, we ate popcorn with no butter because it's healthy. <laughs> we did all those things. Uh, Linda says, oh, hang on, let's see. Uh, she's never heard of them, the daikon radish. And I hadn't either. I, I literally only discovered it a couple weeks ago. So I'm only just beginning to experiment with the daikon. The last thing I did with them was I tried to do a chip. They didn't fry up firm enough. They still tasted nice, but I did um, I did a daikon hash brown. So I did like a cut up hash brown with onion and garlic and it was quite tasty. It did not crisp up like I was hoping it would. I find that the daikon has a lot of moisture in it. So if you want to do a chip or something like that, I would recommend pre-steaming it so that it's al dente and then cook it. Hopefully it would crisp up a little bit better. 
Diane is back. Hello, hello, hello. And and Diane spelt Diacon right, and I spelt it wrong, even in the description. Yes, I did. <laughs> that's what Dory does. That's that's how we do around here. Okay. Darlene says, can't wait to try this. I'm super excited. When you do, take a picture and post it so we can see what you think. Um, and no, Dorothy, I'm going to take the saran off before I put it in the oven because that's bad. <laughs> I do put saran in the microwave. It is microwave friendly, but it is not oven friendly. It's only microwave oven friendly. Um, do, 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 do. <laughs> and Diane wants to know too about the saran wrap. Um, yeah, you guys thought I was going to put that in the oven. Did you, what do you think of me? <sighs> okay, you know I'm a little scattered, but no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. Even Dory knows you can't put your ram wrap in an oven. Because I figured it out when I was a kid. Just saying. <laughs> Linda, Linda thought I was going to put it in the oven too. You guys have zero faith in me. I forgive you. I forgive you because I love you like that. <laughs> oh, and look at I flipped you around, and now you're looking at my grill. There we go. That's where I cook my hamburgers. <laughs> oh, goodness. So I am actually, uh, why don't I take the wrap off this? I'll put it in the oven, and then in about a half an hour, I'll be able to post pictures for you guys. So 20 minutes to a half an hour in the oven on this one. I'm going to put it in at 300. 300. It smells so good though, like the Parmesan cheese just, it makes the au gratin flavor, I'll tell you what. So in the oven we go, and I shall let you guys see what it looks like soon. And of course, as always, I'll post it with pictures of my dinner and my side dish. Now I want to show you one of the other favorite vegetables I got the other day. Now, these are my standard radish. So when you're buying just a regular radish, they look like this, which is why I like using them for a mini red potato because they really do look like the red potato. But I picked up some, it's a choy. It's not a bok choy, but it's a, it's a choy variation. So we're gonna have this with my side dish for dinner tonight as well. I'm just going to chop it up and steam it. I'm going to wash it up, chop it up, and steam it in ghee. So it'll be very similar to a bok choy. I, I can't remember which variation. If anybody knows which it is by just looking at it, I'm Dorian and I can't tell my choys apart. All those, all those choys look the same to me. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm making myself giggle. I'm making myself giggle. I'm so funny. Oh, goodness. <laughs> yes, that's right. You guys have my back. No saran in the oven. I love you that you are absolutely having my back. Miss Kelly, we are going to... Oh, what are you making to go with that? Um, I haven't decided 100% for sure yet. I think we're having meatballs. I think we're having meatballs for supper tonight. Last night, I did... Um, white fish and meatballs so I think we might do that again anything goes with an au grot, right like with a good au gratin you can eat anything with that so I'm thinking maybe meatballs we might do meatballs we might do burgers I've got some chicken burgers and some beef burgers that I need to grill up so I'm not sure okay Cindy says that that is a Napa cabbage and she loves a Napa cabbage when I bought it they called it it wasn't bok choy, but it was a different kind of choy. I don't know. That they Maybe they're wrong, too. I don't know. Do you know what? I don't judge people when they say stuff wrong. I do it all the time. <laughs> and then I'm like, cheers, you're my people. <laughs> if, you, if you say stuff wrong, if you embarrass yourself in public, you know, that's, you're my people. If you embarrass other people in public, you're definitely my people. Like... That's even better than embarrassing yourself in public. If you, you like go out in public and embarrass other people. <laughs> and also if you have teenagers, they love it when you embarrass them in public. I'm just gonna put that out there. I'm gonna say teenagers love that. They even wanna hold hands in public, just thinking. 
<laughs> Cindy says, it's Napa cabbage where she is too. And Linda says, ha ha. Ha ha, Dory. Ha ha. Oh, my goodness. So exciting. So I'm curious, what is your favorite fat? What is your go-to fat? What is your standard that you use for most things? For me, when I do my veggie side dishes, I try to use a little bit of a variety of fat. So for example, last night we had last night we had cabbage and leek cooked in ghee. And then on the side, we had white fish cooked in olive oil and meatballs also cooked in olive oil. So I try to get more than just one kind of fat. Again, because of the different breakdown of fats and also so I don't get tired of one flavor, right? If every single time you do your veggie side dish, it's olive oil every time. Oh, I do radish, I do olive oil, I do, you know, everything is olive oil. Eventually I get tired of that one flavor. And for me, because I'm on a budget, I always recommend pick up one fat at a time. Pick up your most economical, your most versatile fat, and then every other payday, you can just pick up a fat and you can add to your fat portfolio. This week when I was at the grocery store, ghee was on sale for $6. So I paid $16 for the last jar this size I bought, and this one was six. So I think I might go back and buy them out. <laughs> That's not mean, right? Like, I'm totally gonna use it eventually. That's not. It's not really hoarding. Okay, so it's probably hoarding. I probably don't need to buy them all. That's greedy. But I'm definitely going to go back and buy one more. <laughs> They're definitely buying one more. Ooh, Alterna Sweets. Ooh, and when I did the meatballs last night, I had them with my Alterna Sweets barbecue sauce. And I still have just a teeny little bit. Do you remember when we made our fat berry barbecue sauce. I have just a little bit of my fat berry barbecue sauce left. So I might put that on my meatballs tonight. And to make this, this was super easy, simple. I heated up some berries. For me, I used blackberry and raspberry blend. You heat those up. You add a teeny little bit of sweetener to take off the bitter. And then you blend that with equal parts, Alterna Sweets sugar-free barbecue sauce. And then I added olive oil. So that's how you get the good fat. So if you're doing one tablespoon, it's one tablespoon fat, one tablespoon berries, one tablespoon barbecue sauce. I made up my little dish and I've had, I'm going to say I've had it for three or four. I keep doing this. Move the coffee, Dory. Move the coffee. Uh, three or four different meals. So it's something that you can make up and have on hand for that special treat. Because for me, condiments and sauces make all the difference in the world. Like, all the difference in the world. Between bland and basic to fantastic restaurant quality food, the difference is in the garnish and in the sauce. That's it. Like. When you guys look at my food and you think, oh, it's so fancy, it really isn't any fancier than what you guys make at home. I just take the time to plate it really pretty and, you know, you do the glazes and the sauces and the pretty stuff drizzled on it. And for me, it changed my life. Like, before I went to KetoCon, I never tried any keto products. None. Zero, not a one until I was at KetoCon and I discovered a whole brand new world of yummy, yummy things. Ooh, Misty from Alterna Sweet said she made it and it caramelizes in the air fryer too. Oh, that would be so beautiful. I need me an air fryer. Like, I, I don't know, air fryer gods, I need to charm them. How do you charm air fryer gods? Just say. <laughs> Oh, Cindy said the Facebook blacked out on her. I don't know if you guys are still watching on Facebook, but Cindy said hers went away. So, 
I don't know. And Linda's asking if it's freezing on anybody else too. So what I would say is pop out, pop back in. Sometimes it gets glitchy and weird on Facebook. I don't know. I Facebook should love me, but it doesn't. How rude. Oh, on pork chops. Yes. Oh my God, on pork chops. I had it on grilled chicken and it was like, oh my God. I made chicken burgers and I grilled them and then at the very last, I glazed them with the fatberry barbecue sauce and it was like, girl, I just wanted to like crawl up into a ball and be like, this is so good, this is so good, this is so good. <laughs> Oh, and Linda said she's blacked out too. So I would say try click out and click back and see. Because on my end, it's all good. It's all good on my end. So if you guys have any other questions. Ah, I love you too, Misty. You're my girl. And actually, while I got you guys, I will, I'll show you what Misty's sauces look like. Because I got some hand. I have my full bottles that I take pictures with. And I'm going to show you guys what I do with the tail ends of my ketchups and my barbecue sauces because I won't lie, um, this is liquid gold at my house. I've been known to spank fingers. I'm just putting it out there and I'm gonna say, I have been known to spank fingers for eating my sauce. <laughs> That's not yours. You eat your own, that one is mine. So this one is the smoky barbecue sauce and you can get that in the jug size now. So like the big old jugs you can get. This is the classic tomato. And man, I was a ketchup hater. I'll tell you guys a secret. Before, I used to get ketchup and I would put a whole packet of salt and two packs of pepper. And that was how I ate ketchup. Like to make it palatable to me. I add nothing to their ketchups. This one, I'm at the bottom of my bottle. See, I've got my spare to open up. This is the spicy ketchup, and dude, I don't even know what to tell you. It is, it's literally ketchup up like three notches. It's good, but it's not burn your face off spicy. It's like tangy spicy. I love it. And then I'm going to show you guys, this is what I do when I come down to the bottom of my bottle. So I had about this much barbecue sauce. Oh, I love you, Misty. Misty's reminding me to tell you guys, if you want to try Alterna Sweets, you can use my discount code UNICORN to save some money, which of course everybody loves saving money. Duh. So I had about that much barbecue sauce left. So what I did is I added my olive oil. I added my apple cider vinegar. I added my spices. I added my seasonings. And then I have my own homemade barbecue Southwest salad dressing. So whenever I get down to the bottom part of my bottles, my ketchup, my spicy ketchup, my barbecue sauce, then I add all my good stuff and I make it salad dressing. Because I, I can't bear to waste like the bottom of the bottle. And, and I love you, Misty, but it won't all come out. Like I've tried. and. My tongue is not long enough to make it all the way down to the bottom of the bottle. You can't get it all out. So this is my solution to that. And then I've got my own homemade salad dressing. I'm just going to pour a little bit in a spoon. Mmm, it smells so good. And you guys can see what it looks like when I make my homemade dressing. So I'll use olive oil, avocado oil, MCT oil, any combination of, and then Oh my goodness. Oh. So, your portions here for barbecue sauce. Then I add to there of MCT oil. I add a little bit more olive oil. I add my vinegar. And then I fill it up with water and I add my seasonings. And it is absolutely perfect and ready to go every time I need it. So I don't have to worry about the added sugars, carbs, and junk that I get in some of the bottled salad dressings. So, and again, it has all the good stuff. Like, you've got your apple cider vinegar, you've got your MCT oil. So it is a really good, healthy boost to your salad 
instead of just putting on ranch or something like that. So, <laughs> Linda has no sound. I have no idea. Everybody's all weird. So, I guess we'll sign out because it's all bizarre like on Facebook. But this is what I will do for you guys on Facebook. I will save the Instagram version and I will share it over to group so you can watch it without the glitches and I'll also load it up to YouTube. So if you guys want to catch it after, I'm going to pop it all on and then we'll see. Let me take a look at our O'Groton before we go so you guys can see how we're starting to melt down. Okay. So we've got the start on our melt and our browning and then usually I would mix it kind of at the halfway through so that the blobs of cream cheese melt in there and give it a mix and I'm going to pop it back in the oven for about another 15 minutes. But look at how nice and cheesy and gooey that is already. So we're going to sign out. I'll get you guys the better Instagram version and I'll see you soon. I hope you have an absolutely amazing evening. And if you're curious about cereal, I did a new keto cereal recipe today. So if you go check out my page, it's there. And it looks like this. We made a Coco Polo elderberry cereal. And it made this whole bag and my serving. So if you guys have been missing cereal, go head over to my page and check out cereal. Oh yes, you, you gotta, you gotta eat it gooey. <laughs> so I'll see you guys soon. Have a great night. And thank you so much for joining me for clean eating series. And hopefully Nancy will be back soon. In the meantime, I wanted to let you guys know that Dr. Ken Berry is going to cover Wellness Wednesdays for Nancy tomorrow. So tune in to Nancy's regularly scheduled time for Wellness Wednesdays and Dr. Ken Berry will have that live for you guys. So tune in on Nancy's page. You don't want to miss it. See you guys soon. Bye dolls.